really, I pro- maybe you should be asking me this question, but I'll ask you this question. Sure. <laughs> Has Brock Purdy finally silenced his critics? I think, you know, it's like one of those things where there's going to be critics unless he wins the next one. Yeah. If you win, I mean, that's just reality. Now, should he have? Sure. Because, I mean, come on. He, the guy's LeBron played. James has critics. Yeah. And everybody's you know, got critics. Territory. Steph Curry has critics. Right. I mean, you're going to, and, and, and you're only as good as your last performance, right? No matter what you do, you're only as good as your last performance. But to me, it, in some ways, I think that he can kind of forever silence all of his critics. I know a lot of younger Niner fans would never believe this, but Joe Montana had won a Super Bowl in 81. And when he went into that 84 Super Bowl against Dan Marino and Don Shula, there were still a lot of people that were like, yeah, he's a product of Walsh. And now he's going to go up against a real quarterback with a real arm. And it's going to be lights out for Joe. And, um, and then Joe won that game and was the MVP of that game. The Roger Craig could have been named the MVP. Uh, Joe was the MVP. And I don't think that he ever, he was a made man from that point on. He had two rings. He had beaten Marino. Uh, he was on top of the sport. And never again really was he criticized until. He hadn't won an MVP yet, though. I mean, still, there were some right. questions about him. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and there were other guys in his era that were damn good. But no like, he, there were people that were like, there was a solid drum beat of Joe's a product of Walsh. Because Walsh's offense was so, so um, on the cutting edge back then, you know, and and so there was like, yeah, you know, Joe's a product of Walsh until he beat the Dolphins. And if somehow Brock Purdy can beat the great Mahomes and the Chiefs and vanquish them and win the Super Bowl, I think he's going to be in a totally different level. I don't think you're going to see. I think people will give him his and acknowledge that whatever way he does it, is his way and it may not be he may not have the arm of you know Allen or the mobility of Allen or Mahomes uh, or Lamar but that he's going to have a major seat at the table so I I think the next one really will go the greatest distance to silencing the the people who want to marginalize him okay hold on wait a second that was a little charged what you just said people who want to marginalize him yeah I don't want to I'm going to represent the the Brock Purdy critics. <laughs> okay. Someone has to, and I'll do it. I don't want to marginalize Brock Purdy. I like Brock Purdy. Like, we know Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy is a very professional, down-to-earth, nice guy, at least with us. So I don't want to marginalize him. I don't have anything against him. But I am the skeptic here. And I feel like if you're approaching him from that lens, like, man, he is on a really good team, and he might be a product of this system to a degree. And it's hard to say exactly how good he is. This game was kind of a Rorschach test. I feel like if you like Brock Purdy, you fit, you focus on how he finished it. If you're skeptical of Brock Purdy, you point out things like, man, he threw another couple passes that could have gotten picked and one that did. Like, the running that he does is great. I don't think anyone has anything to say about it. Everyone's like, wow, that's amazing. He can really scramble. Like, everyone. But in terms of the, the throwing, the interception was a Jimmy Garoppolo pick. If you wanted to be a jerk about it. Well, and it, then, did his hand get yeah. hit or did the ball get hit somehow? So I, I didn't see the ball get touched, but when I, I watched it again, that I guess. Play anyway, because Debo wasn't open. Right. And the ball so. fluttered, but how much of it was because of the kind of because of it, it was being tipped. I don't know. It wasn't a good play. That's for sure. And, and he's like, made some negative they, plays. They they were 10 point favorites against the Packers. They were seven point favorites against the Lions. The, both of those teams have mediocre to subpar defenses. And he wasn't great. Um, that being said, he's in the Super Bowl. And if he has a great game in the Super Bowl, no one's going to care what his passer rating was in the NFC playoffs. So like you said, it all comes down to the next game. And what's crazy is that's a really good defense. Now, breaking news, they just lost Charles and many who torn ACL. He's really important to them. Very yeah. important to them. Yeah. They're the number two defense in the league this year. Chiefs are really good on all three levels. Sneed on the back level, Bolton at, at the middle level, Jones, of course, we know real well uh, on that defensive line. Yeah, no, Chiefs are big time. I I picked Chiefs to beat beat Baltimore. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm surprised that they're there. Um Good they call. were I was going to take them take Mahomes over over um, over over 
you know, Lamar and, and, and just, I always thought, felt like the Ravens weapons were not great. I don't love their runners. Uh, they had Sneed on flowers. Flowers still had a hundred yard day, but, um, you know, Sneed's pretty damn good. So, and then I didn't think Lamar would run for a hundred, not with Nick Bolton there and his four or five speed and great instincts. So, um, so I, I thought Kansas city could win if they got a lead like they did. I also thought like they could come from behind if they had to and beat the Ravens. So I wasn't the big Ravens. I wasn't, I, you know, I believed in the chiefs, but yeah, losing a Menahue and having Willie Gay hurt and a Menahue hurt Joe Thune, the left guard hurt, uh, Kadarius Tony hurt. Um, they're, it's not, this isn't the same team that the Niners played a few years ago. Mahomes in some ways is better, but no, no, uh, no Tyreek. I mean, they're, they're just a little bit different and, um, but there's, it's going to be a daunting task because Reed is so well coached. And the one thing is Reed's not going to pull a Dan Campbell and Mahomes is not going to pull a, a Jared Goff or, a, you know, a, a Jordan love and just start throwing picks. Reed's going to make great calls. And Mahomes is going to make great reads and great throws. So if the Niners are going to get this one, they will. They're going to have to earn it. Okay, one more thing as a as the designated critic of Brock Purdy here. Um, he, we've seen him struggle against AFC defenses this year: Cincinnati, Cleveland, Baltimore. Those three. Now he's got to go up against another AFC defense that's as good as any of those that just made Lamar Jackson look pretty bad, frankly. That's it. so, and they and, and they did a pretty good job against Josh Allen the week before that as well, and they made Tua look disgustingly awful. So big game for Purdy. Like if, if he wins the Super Bowl and has a good game, beats Patrick Mahomes, can't really take that away from him. Like that's that says everything. I, that would silence the critics. Beats Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Uh, beats the, beats that defense that made Lamar Jackson look pretty weak. That'd be huge. I think a lot of his critics might say, you know, boy, after the way he played against Detroit and Green Bay's defenses, I expect him to play pretty poorly in the Super Bowl. I'm not saying I expect that, but a critic might say that. Well, I mean, I, I you never know what you're going to get, right? First of all, the 49ers have played two two games that weren't great. I mean, let's be honest, they didn't start either game well. So on one hand, you could say maybe they're due. On the other hand, you could say Green Bay was 28th against the run. Uh, Detroit's pass defense was, you know, horrendous. And their run D in the playoffs was not much better. And, you know, at times they struggled against Detroit. And now here they've got a Kansas City defense with Chris Jones and Carl Loftus on that front, with Nick Bolton on the second level, you know, with Trent McDuffie's a phenomenal young uh, nickelback, and Legarius Sneed. Sneed is a true number one guy. Justin Reed's a good player. Yeah, I mean, Magnolia's a really good coordinator. This is going to be a major yeah. step up in competition, no yeah. question about it. It's the Niner offense is going to have to be really, really good. Really, and good. I, I don't think it's enough for Brock. It's going to be such an interesting game for Brock. I don't think it's enough for him to just not throw a pick. They're undefeated when he doesn't throw a pick this year. Going against Mahomes, he's got to be, he's going to have to have some gunslinger moments in this game to win it, I think. And also not throw picks because Mahomes can do that. Well, and it's a team game, of course. You know, the one thing about Kansas City is, um, you know, Kansas City has one receiver. I mean, the, the, the receiving core that the Chiefs have, wide receivers, is not as good, in my opinion, as what Detroit had or Green Bay had. And then um, the offensive line, Donovan Smith has been called for a ton of penalties. J1 Taylor, the right tackle, has given up a lot of pressures. Uh, the tackles, the Niner defensive ends, on paper, should beat the chief offensive tackles. So that better happen. And then, uh, I was, to me, I was really disappointed yesterday in Javon Hargrave. Uh, is Joe Thune going to play? And then is that, or is it going to be Allegretti? Um, are they going to get uh, that? You know, is Hargrave going to produce like the player they signed him to be? Um, you know, and then Pacheco can then can they handle the outside run of Pacheco because Pacheco's every bit as good as uh, the running runners they've they've gone up against. The one difference is the Chiefs are leaning heavily on Kelsey, and the Niners do have Fred Warner, who you know should be a real good answer for Travis Kelsey.